Okay, today's topic is uncertainty in slope and y-intercept. So I've got some mock data from an experiment. We've got an independent variable or an x variable. We've got a dependent variable or a y variable. We've got uncertainties in the dependent variable or our delta y's and an uncertainty in our independent variable or our delta x's. And then if we take that data and we plot it with the error bars, this is what it looks like. There is a significant uncertainty in the horizontal or x direction and that means we should be using error boxes. So I'm going to put error boxes, but I only put them on the first and last point. I could put them on all the points, but in terms of uncertainty and slope, it's enough to just consider the first and last point. We don't gain a lot if we include the other points. So what the error boxes simply mean is that if you've got a, you make a measurement, it of course is in the center of the box, but that means that you're within experimental uncertainty if your measurement were to lie anywhere within the error box. What we'd now like to draw is the Slope, the line with the maximum slope that will satisfy those error boxes. And that would be a point that goes from this bottom right hand corner, this maximum slope, bottom right hand corner to this top left hand corner. That's the maximum slope that you could get. And this here would be our line of maximum slope right there. Let's do the same thing with the minimum slope. The minimum slope will have to go from this top leftmost corner right here to this bottom rightmost corner. And this would be our, our line of minimum slope. So what we need to do to find out those maximum and minimum slopes now is to find out what these points are. So let's do that for at least one point. Let's do this point here, down in the bottom right hand corner. So we're going to figure out what are the coordinates of this point. 222, that's the measured value. That's in the center of the box, 222. So our center of the box is at 222. We've got an uncertainty in the y variable here of 4. So this distance here is 4. Our uncertainty in the x variable is 0 0.6. And what we're looking for is that point in the bottom corner. So that point has to be in the x direction, 2 plus 0.6, or 2.6. In the y direction, it's got to be 22 minus 4. We've got to come down by 4 units there. 22 minus 4 would be 18. And we could do the same thing for this point here at the top. In that case, for the top point, then our central point would be the point 1481. Our uncertainty in the y variable is 8, so this height here would be an 8. And going across on both sides, it would be 0 0.9. So if we're looking for this point here, this point here, it's going to be 14 minus 0.9 or 13.1. And this point up here in the y, we're going to have to add 8 to 81. So 81 plus 8 would give 89. And that would give us two points on our maximum slope line. That means we can calculate the slope. We can do the same thing for the orange line, the minimum slope line as well. So I've written down the four points. Here's the the two points on the maximum slope line. Here's the two points are the on the minimum slope line. So let's calculate our slopes. Let's do our maximum slope line. Its slope would be the change in y values divided by the change in x values, which would mean our y values are here. So it'd be the the y values change from 18 to 89. So that would be 89 minus 18. Our x values change from 2.6 to 13.1. And if you calculate that out, you should get a slope of 6.76. Similarly, for our minimum slope, our y values will change 
from 26 to 72, so that's 72 minus 26, as our x values change from 1.4 to 14.9. And if you work that out, you should get a minimum slope of 3.40. And that means our uncertainty in slope, which will equal max slope minus min slope over 2, has got to equal 6.76 minus 3.40 divided by 2, giving an uncertainty in the slope of about 1.7. So that we could express our slope, uh, the actual value of the slope, the, if we come back here, there was a, this was the line of best fit right here, and you can see that the slope was about 5.0 in the line of best fit. So our actual slope could be written as slope equals 5.0 plus or minus. When you're actually doing this in an experiment, don't forget your units. Plus or minus 1.7. And typically, typical case here, you'd take your uh, uncertainty and make it just one significant figure. So maybe a better representation of that would simply be as 5 plus or minus 2. So you get a slope that's ranging somewhere between uh, 3 and 7, or more accurately 1.7 and 6.8. What's the good of finding the uncertainty in the slope? Typically your slope is related to some physical quantity. So let's say that uh, in our experiment, the slope is supposed to equal some physical quantity uh, that had a true value, an accepted value of 4.61. So what we could then do is check to see whether 4.61 it lies between our maximum slope and minimum slope. And in this case, it does. And that's, that would mean that we could make a statement. So we could make a, a statement along the lines that the slope is within experimental uncertainty of the accepted value. Now, if there wasn't a value, an accepted value that we could compare to, it's still important to have uncertainties so that you you know how accurate your or how precise your results are, so that you can tell your reader this information. It's also useful to know the uncertainty in the y-intercept. And if I take my two points, I can generate the minimum and maximum slope lines. The minimum slope line is given by, if you, if you work this out, is given by y equals the slope, the minimum slope, 3.40x, plus the y-intercept, which turns out to be 0 0.41. And the maximum slope line turns out to be y equals that maximum slope 6.76x plus 21.2. And so you'd want to notice here that there is, our y-intercept that is, lies somewhere between 0 0.41 and 21.2. And you want to notice there that the, sl the, the origin is not within that range. So it's telling us something quite important, that, that we have really determined that the origin should not be on that curve as a straight line. And we've got to come up with an explanation for that. And there's three possible explanations as to why, if, if we knew, like say we were doing an experiment like we're dropping balls from different heights. So we drop them from different heights and we measure the time to get to the ground. Well, we're certainly expecting when h is 0 that the time is 0. We're expecting a 0, 0 intercept. And if we're not getting one, we've got to figure out why. And there's three basic possibilities. Possibility 1 is that you've just underestimated your uncertainties. You made your uncertainty bars a little too short. Second possibility is that there's some sort of systematic error. So all of your points we got a graph, and you got a bunch of these points on it. It's not going through the origin here, but that's because all the points have been shifted up by the same amount. And this might be because your scale's not properly zeroed, etc. 
The third possibility is that you don't really have a linear relationship there, and that's quite possible. Let's consider this data. Here we've got three points, and it certainly looks to me like we've got a linear relationship from those. I can draw a line through the three points. But if we, the way I actually generated those three points was using a square root function. So there's the square root function, and you'll notice that it seemed to be linear in this region, but we didn't have enough data over here to see that it actually wasn't linear at all. So that's your third possibility. So three possibilities. You really got to look closely at your data to decide which one it is, but it should uh, there should be something there that will tell you which one of these is explaining why it didn't go through the origin. So here's one last example I'd like you to try. Um, maybe pause the video now. I'm going to post the solutions in about two seconds and you can uh, check your answers. Okay, there's the, uh, there's the solutions and that's all for today folks. Thank you.